a car system can sound great one moment and a bit flat the next. And a big part of that comes from how the signal is shaped before it reaches the speakers. That's why this video is all about the best DSPs for car audio. I'm going through a set of options that sit in different price ranges, and each one fits different goals or setups. That's why watching the full video helps you figure out which one matches what you're planning. You can find links to every product in the description. If this kind of content helps you out, you can tap like, hit subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you catch future videos. And if something isn't clear, the comment section is there for your questions. Let's move into the reviews. Number 5. Taramps DSP Pro 2.4S Sitting at the fifth spot, this one stands out for folks who want a lot of tuning room without spending much. Right away, the small size makes it easy to tuck into tighter places, and the lightweight helps if your setup already has plenty of gear stacked in. You can pick it up in black or white, so it blends with whatever layout you're planning. What caught my attention is how much control it gives with that 15-band graphic equalizer. Each band lets you boost or cut by up to 12 decibels from 25 hertz up to 16 kilohertz. On top of that, it comes with 12 preset styles, so someone who doesn't want to adjust every single band can still shape the sound quickly. There's even a single band parametric option that works on both inputs if you want to tighten up one tricky area. The crossover section offers different filter types and slope options, all the way up to minus 48 decibels per octave. You get two input channels, four output channels, and the choice of RCA inputs or high-level inputs, which helps with factory units. There's an anti-puff function, a limiter, phase flip, alignment tools, and even a small test generator built right in. There are a few things to keep in mind. Some folks mention a tiny bit of noise when nothing is playing, and the push-in connectors might feel a bit loose in a car that shakes a lot. The learning curve can be steep for beginners, and the manual doesn't always help. That said, for a budget pick, the feature set is packed. Number 4. Dayton Audio DSP 408 Taking the fourth spot, this one leans more into flexibility, giving you plenty of room to shape your setup the way you want. It works for car systems and home systems straight out of the box, and the black finish keeps it looking clean no matter where you mount it. What stands out right away is the eight output channels, each with its own 10-band parametric equalizer. You can drag the exact spot you want to adjust in the software, which makes fine-tuning pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Time alignment goes up to 277 centimeters, so spacing differences inside a vehicle or room are easier to correct. There are six preset slots too, which helps if you like switching between different styles or testing layouts. The crossover section gives you slopes all the way up to 24 decibels and the usual filter types. You get phase control, mixing options, high and low shelf adjustments, and the ability to route signals in whatever pattern your amps need. It hooks up by USB to a Windows computer, and you can add a Bluetooth dongle or a small wired remote if you want quicker control. It comes in one size, and the weight sits at nearly two pounds. There are a few things to keep in mind. Some folks talk about background hiss or alternator whine in certain cars, the phone app isn't great, and the output voltage could be stronger. But for a lower mid-range pick, the feature list is generous and fits multi-amp setups really well. Number 3. Mini DSP 2x4 HD Holding the third spot, this one shifts into a more advanced zone, giving you tools that are meant for deeper tuning. The size is still pretty small packed into a black metal case so it fits in a car setup without taking up much space. What stands out here is the mix of inputs. You can run RCA, you can run USB for streaming up to 192 kilohertz, and there's a Toslink digital input too. Inside it processes at 96 kilohertz, which leaves plenty of room for detailed shaping. You get two inputs and four outputs, which works really well for folks building active front stages or pairing subs with mids and highs. Each output channel can run delay, FIR filters, IIR filters, and full parametric equalization. Biquad programming is in there, and you get Butterworth and Linkwitz Riley crossover options. There are four preset slots, and the small remote switches them quickly, which helps if you want one setup for daily driving and another for testing. It comes with the USB cable, the power supply, and access to the software. There are a few things to think about. The setup takes time, 
the software has a learning curve, and some folks mention that the USB connection can be picky with certain ports. There's no power switch, so it comes on as soon as it's plugged in, and the design feels a bit older. But as an upper mid-range pick, it offers strong tuning depth that fits both car and home layouts. Number 2. Hertz H8 DSP plus DRC HE Coming in at the second spot, this one moves into a more premium zone and gives you a lot of freedom to shape a full system. It's built around 8 output channels and 7 inputs, so there's plenty of room to match it with multi-amp setups or factory units you're trying to clean up. The input choices stand out here. You get high-level inputs that accept low-level signals too, a stereo aux input, and an optical input that runs up to 96 kHz at 24-bit. That optical path skips extra conversion stages, which helps keep the signal clean before it reaches the processing blocks. The software gives you access to a 31-band graphic equalizer, running from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, and you can cut or boost by 12 decibels. You can set filters in full pass, high pass, low pass, or band pass, so the crossover layout is pretty flexible. Delay settings go up to 15 milliseconds with distance options reaching 510 centimeters. That helps line up sound from each speaker so everything arrives together. The DRC remote comes in the box and it lets you switch presets or tweak certain settings without grabbing a computer. The size is compact and the weight sits a bit over a pound, which makes mounting easier. A few minor things pop up. The software only works on Windows computers and the premium price pushes it above the more casual options. But for someone planning a full 8-channel setup, this one offers deep control in a tidy package. Number 1. Audio Control DM810 Taking the top spot, this one pushes into full premium territory and fits systems where you want plenty of channels and deeper control. The size is larger than most of the others on this list, and it comes in a black finish with a fairly sturdy feel, so it works well in bigger installs where space isn't an issue. Right away, the input and output count stands out. You get 8 preamp inputs and 10 preamp outputs, which leaves a lot of room for multi-amp builds. There's a 30-band equalizer, and the built-in RTA on both the input and output helps you see what the system is doing as you make changes. It takes digital signals through Toslink or Coax, and the crossover options go up to 24 decibels per octave. The software gives you signal summing, delay, phase tools, and its own features like clip detection and signal sensing. Time alignment is in there too, so you can fine-tune different speaker distances. If you want quicker access, you can add the ACR remote, and there's a USB port for computer setup. There are a few things worth pointing out. The software can be picky on certain computers, some folks mention hiss or static in rare cases, and the micro USB port feels a bit dated. A small number of users mention settings resetting on them. But for someone looking for a full premium processor with a wide set of tools, this one stands at the top of the list. That brings us to the end of the breakdown. Each option fits different needs, so it really comes down to what kind of setup you're aiming for. If you're interested in any of the picks, the links are sitting in the description. And if this video helped you out, feel free to tap like, hit subscribe, ring the notification bell, and drop a comment if you've got something on your mind. You can check out the other videos on the channel too if you want more guides like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.